Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that we are never alone. Never forsaken. Hallelujah. And that our children, glory to your holy name, are not beggars. Glory to God. Glory to God. They're priests, kings, they're royalty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your holy name. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God forever. Well, go ahead and say hello to somebody. Amen. Bless you this morning. Bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you. I'm about ready to rapture yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Say, wow, look at them fly. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? <laughs> Praise God forever. I it ain't how they get a body yeah. yeah. It keeps yeah. coming up in my spirit, so I'm going to go ahead and work with it. Yeah. You know, we started a series a few weeks back. Amen. Amen. Reverse the curse, right? God yeah. has reversed. The curse. Yeah. Uh, put up Luke chapter 7 for me, please. This isn't in my notes, but it keeps coming up, so we're going to address it. Amen. Amen. Uh, typically, I would say this is down the road thinking that we would probably get here sooner or later in this series, but let's go ahead and get there this morning. Amen. 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 In Luke chapter 7, I believe it is, uh, Jesus comes upon a funeral procession. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Let me go ahead and pull that up here because. No. Let's see. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Ah, oh, Lord, Luke. There it is there. Praise God forever. So, we're talking about facing impossible situations, impossible circumstances. Amen. The doctor that says you must die. And not live. The bank that says we're taking the house. Come on, the boss that says you're fired, get out. Yeah. Facing impossible circumstances. Or maybe I should parenthetically insert seemingly mm. impossible. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Somebody say seemingly. Seemingly. You see, uh, the world will teach you, the world's mold that you get squeezed into, that I get squeezed into sounds something along these lines. You know, the more dramatic you sound about something, the more people will have pity on you. And isn't it a shame that born-again, spirit-filled Christians even will go around seeking pity? Mm. Hallelujah! Yeah. When they are born again, they are. when they are spirit-filled, right. when they belong to the kingdom of God, Amen? To go around the earth and seek pity from somebody who doesn't understand what it is that you belong to is now demoting yourself back into the pool that you came out of. Right I'd like to remind somebody this morning that you were in another kingdom at one time. Yes. That's right. Amen? Yes. And it was a dark kingdom. Mm. Amen? And you had a shepherd. Oh. And he was stealing from you. Right. Yeah. And he was destroying your life. And he was trying to kill you. Right. Amen. And somewhere along the line, God got a hold of your heart. Because the only way you can get into the kingdom of God is if you believe that Jesus is 
the Son of God. And the That's only right. way you can believe that Jesus is the Son of God is if God himself reveals that to you. Yeah. Amen. This is not some, you know, I, you know, because we're, we're so arrogant here in the earth and so filled with ego. We say, oh, well, I sat down one day and I've come to this conclusion <laughs> that Jesus is the Son of God. I've done all my research, you know, and I, I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I, I read after all the theologians, and, and I got a hold of it. Listen to me. Listen to me. What did Jesus say to Peter in Matthew's Gospel? Blessed are you. Yep. Simon Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father Amen. who is in heaven. Yeah. The only way you're in the kingdom of God is because God himself has revealed to your spirit yeah. that his son Jesus is his son. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now last week we took a look at Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I was talking to you about how Jesus revealed to Peter, James, and John who it is that he is, the son of the living God. Amen? But more importantly, or maybe equally as important, when you come into God's kingdom, that level of glory is made available yeah. to you. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. What? That's crazy yeah, talk. That level. It is crazy talk. It's out of your head talk for sure. See, most of you don't need a heart bypass. You need a head bypass. Yeah. Yeah. Keep looking straight ahead. We'll get there. Most of you don't need, come on, a heart bypass. You need a head bypass. Yeah. Right? We start thinking about this and we go, oh, that's impossible. Well, if it's so impossible, how is it that Peter's shadow was healing people? That's right. If it's so impossible. If it's so impossible, how is it that aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from the Apostle Paul's body, and when they were laid on sick people, even demons were driven off? Amen. Come on, somebody. Someone is going to get a hold of this this morning. Somebody say, that's me. That's, that's me. me. You're in a different kingdom right. now. There's a different set of rules. There's a different set of principles. Right. Amen. Amen. And it's a kingdom of light. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not a kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, uh, I was uh, ministering to a, a person this week that had called. Hallelujah. They had called. They had called. Right? We're praying on Thursdays. Lord, send them. Yeah. That's right. Lord, send them. Send in the east, north, south, east. Send in the up and out. Send in the down and out. Send in the depressed. Send in the anxious. Come on, send them yeah. in. Send well, them. we got a phone call from anxious. Yeah. Send them in. Listen to me, Joe. Oh, you have no idea. I was so thrilled. <laughs> what, what, what is that to me? Our, pr our prayers are being answered. Yeah. First, yeah. Mm -hmm. First, the star. Yeah. Then, the come on. Yeah. Right? So here is this individual and has a circumstance and a set of circumstances that they're in. Amen. And it's it's a difficult one for them. Amen. And, and there's, there's uh, some anxiety that's in there, and there's some depression that's in there, come on. Yeah. And then there's some Lyme disease that's in there, mm -hmm. which can cause some of these other things, right. right? Can cause all of these challenges. And here's what they said to me. I said, so how did you find this? Yeah. She didn't even know who she was talking to. She said, I wrote down uh, all the churches in town. And I started calling I said, well, this is Faith Bible Church. She goes, oh, you're the last one. <laughs> I said, yeah? Well, you're the only one that answered. Uh, amen. Yeah. Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. Listen, 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 you got to get a hold of this. Yeah. You're the last one. <laughs> Come on, stay with me. Yeah. All the religion in town couldn't help her. That's right. All the doctors in town couldn't help. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come on. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Right? And I have a trusted vice president. And I played the voicemail that we got the next day. Oh, hallelujah. Am I right? <laughs> you know, I. 
I put on some worship. Yeah. <laughs> I put on some worship. Yeah. And all of a sudden, things just got better. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, yep. things got better. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Things. I wait yeah. for somebody to get a hold of this. Yeah. What, what? Yeah. Religion didn't make it better. Yeah. The doctors didn't make it better. But God. Turn it around. Yeah. Things got better. better. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. I'm going to be talking to some of you because they need a ride to church. Yeah. Sounds good. Amen. 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 They need to get here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening? Why? Got to get around people that believe like I believe. Got to get around people that act like I'm yeah. in a different Amen. kingdom now. That's right. There's a whole bunch of ducks over here. Why? Yeah. And I need to get away from the ducks. And get over with the eagles. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get up off this ground that I'm on. I need to start soaring. Yeah. And start looking down on the circumstance, the problem, the challenge, the issue that I've got. Rather than looking up and bowing down to it. Yeah. Who am I talking to Come this on. morning? Come on. Right? We're talking about God working in impossible. No, no, no. Seemingly yeah. impossible. He can change it in a moment of time. Yeah, yeah. Amen. If you'll engage with him in his word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How do I know this? Hallelujah. Well, we see here in Luke's gospel in the 7th chapter in the 11th verse that Jesus comes upon a funeral. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the backstory here is that it's a widow woman. What does that mean? It means her husband has died, which means that her source of economy now has left the earth. Are you listening to me? And so she's got a son who is able to work, which means that the son is able to take care of her. It would seem to me that the Bible is replete with young men, in particular, taking care of those that need taking care of. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and uh, listen, I know that the concept of honor is lost in the culture, but it is not lost in the kingdom of God. Right. That's true. Young men, honor your mothers. Right. Yeah. That was weak. <laughs> Young men, honor your mothers. Amen. Right? The Bible says, all the way back there in Genesis, when Moses comes down off of Sinai with the Ten Commandments, the third one is what? Is what? Is what? Is that the third one? Well, what does that have to do with the relationship with God? I thought the first five were God word and the next five were man word. What does that have to do with the Bible says, honor your mother and father and it'll go well yeah. for you. It's yeah. the first commandment right. with a promise. Right. Mm. Are you listening to me? So you treat mom and dad with honor. By the way, if you take a look at the word honor in the Greek, you'll see that it always has a connotation of money. You take care of them. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, they lived it for days. Oh, well, that's enough metal in there. <laughs> Amen. We see that Jesus comes upon a funeral where the widow's son has died. And they are carrying the son to the same place they carried the father. Just because your father died. Uh -huh. Yeah. Doesn't mean you got to go to the same place. Yeah, that's right. Come on, somebody. Just because drugs and alcohol took him out doesn't mean that's where you got to go. Come on. And just be yeah. I, I feel like I feel like preaching. Yeah. Woo! You want some of that? <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God! Are you listening to me? Just because. You know, I'm Italian, and this is the way Italians operate. Just because I'm Irish, and this is what the Irish do. Listen, just because does not determine your future. Amen. Right? You know, diabetes took out my mom, my grandma, my uncle, my con. A high blood pressure took them out. You know, people in my family tend to die early. Nope. <laughs> are you listening to me? We are in a different yes. kingdom Hallelujah. now. There's a different set of principles, a different set of rules that govern us. Amen. Amen. And we must operate in them in the earth. Yeah. We must yeah. operate in the glory right. yeah. of God. You are a carrier of the glory 
of God. Now, you Pastor, don't feel so glorious this morning. That's all right. You don't look so glorious. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Only a couple of you are paying attention. That'll sink in in just a minute. That'll come. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Just because. Well, you know, my family has this history. It has that. Let's stop at the cross. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're Amen. listening to me. Amen. And here's what I, I, I was actually in this scripture this week in my own devotions, and I kept coming back to it. Because Jesus, the Bible says, is moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now listen. Nobody went up to him and begged him. Mm. Come on, you got to start reading the Bible and then read things that aren't there. Right. Nobody came over to him and said, oh, Jesus, please, 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 please. He saw it. Right. And he was moved with compassion. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. Now, word of wisdom could have been operating. He could have maybe known that, that listen, this is what the God's plan is. Yeah, it's probably what he knew, is that this is what God's plan is, that he would raise that young man back to life. It's possible that he could operate that way. He could also be operating in, in word of knowledge that maybe he looked at that woman and saw and instantly God revealed to him everything that needed to be said and done. Yeah, right. Right? But the Bible doesn't record any of that. The Bible says Jesus saw it and was moved with compassion. Someone's got to get a hold of this. You don't yeah. have to beg Jesus. No, yeah. He's already moved with compassion. Yes, right. It's good. Thank you for those two head shakes, those four cup. Yeah. He saw and was moved. Yeah. Here, here's wow. your challenge. Wow, wow. Here's your challenge. Go home and see how many times Jesus saw and was moved. Mm -hmm. That's on you. Mm -hmm. Let's go back here to this circumstance. It's impossible for this widow. Do you know what's going to happen to this widow now? She's going to end up getting thrown out of her house. She's going to end up living on the side of the road begging. Unless something changes. Yeah. But God. But God. Yeah. Amen. But God. But God. Are you listening to me? You notice that she didn't break ranks with everybody and run over and see there's Jesus and fall down at his feet and say, you got to do something. Right. And then here's what I noticed about Jesus. Can you give the next one? Did you see that? Yeah. I kept coming back to it. Mm. He walked over to the young man, laid his hands on the young man. That's not what the Bible says, does it? No. What does the Bible say he did? Touched the cloth. He yeah. touched the thing that they right. were carrying him to his failed destiny yeah. in. Yeah. Touching yeah. the thing that represents death. Yep. Touching the thing that says, this is where I gave yeah. up. This is where yeah. I quit. He went over to the place and said, listen, yeah. let's address the issue. It's not the dead body in there. It's right. the fact that you all put him, come on, somebody, yeah. and I'm going to address yeah. the issue. Yeah. He touched the thing, the symbol of death. Come on. Right. This is what you do with dead people. You put them in a box. And you bring the box to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Apparently, when God is moved with compassion, that is no longer the case. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to let this one sit here. Some of you are going to start running in just a second. <laughs> because the doctor has said your situ situation, your circumstance is impossible. <laughs> You're going to have to die. The bank has said, your situation, your circumstance is impossible. You're going to lose everything. And some of you have been looking at the, the stock market ticker tape and going, ah! <laughs> You're not going to die. That's right. yeah. Are you listening to me? Jesus has already been moved with compassion. And I want you to get a hold of this. The Holy Spirit is jumping right out of the middle of my body saying, God has already dealt with it. Yeah. 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 He's already dealt with it. Right. The Bible says that Jesus tasted death 
for all of us. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which yeah. means if he tasted death for all of us, do you have to taste death then? No. no. As a matter of fact, the guarantee is when you're a born-again believer, when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that you will step from this life into the presence of God. You see, you've already got eternal life. Yeah. Right? I, listen, I'm on a mission to correct that doctrine. It's false. Well, when you die, that's when you enter eternity. No, you've got eternity right now. Yes. Living on the inside of you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Your, your current present possession is eternity. Yeah. Amen? you got all the healing that you'll ever need. All the glory you'll ever need, all the prosperity you'll ever need, all the help you'll ever need currently living right here on the inside. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus dealt with the issue. Huh. Amen. I said this Friday night, it bears repeating. There are too many, listen to me across the country, including my friends, there are too many pastors dealing with behavior come on you want to live your best life now pablo my best life. nonsense worldly thinking creeping into the pulpit. not creeping in it's boldly in the pulpit right? yeah. standing right there saying listen here's a little feel good and go home Yep. i am telling you by the authority of the word of god that you've got all of God's glory living on the inside of you right now. You want to live your best life? You're going to have to live inside out. Not outside in. Not addressing behaviors and this and circumstance and family issues and cats and dogs living together. All this stuff. No, no, no. Get a hold of the greater one that's on the inside of you. And he will change your circumstance. He'll change it in a moment of time. Amen. You don't have to wait. You can do it right now. The best way I know how to do it is to begin to confess it. You'll have what you say. The greater one lives on the inside of me. That circumstance is turned. For my good. Yeah. Glory to God. Well, we better welcome the E family. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Why don't you give them a wave? Thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. But I encourage you to come down here and get under this corporate anointing. Yeah. Amen. There's 440 in this room today. There's victory inside of here today. You yes. go, oh, I don't feel anything. Well, you're not supposed to feel it. You're supposed to sense it in your spirit. Amen. Amen. There is all that you need. Let me try this again. Right. The Bible says yeah. where two or three right. gather in his name, yes. he is there. Right. Amen. 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 So let's see. Huh? Two, three. Oh, we got it right here. <laughs> we don't even need you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've got everything we need right here. Three are gathered in his name. He's there. Right. And you currently carry on the inside of you the greater one. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening Amen. to me? The one that weighed the oceans in the palm of his hand is living on the inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. The one that knows how much the mountains weigh yeah. is living right. on the inside of you. The one that told the ocean you can come this far and no further, that one is living on the inside of you. The one that spun this whole galaxy, whole universe, the Bible says, opened it up like opening up a curtain, lives on the inside of you. You think your circumstance or situation is impossible? Mm -hmm. It is not. Amen. I said, that was, listen, that was so weak. It is not. It is not. Someone needs to get a hold of this. Amen. It is not. Amen. There is nothing impossible for you. Right. Now, Amen. now hear me. When people are going through struggle, when they're going through sickness, when they're going through, did somebody say they're going through it? They're going through. When they're going through financial hardship, when they're going through financial difficulty, when they're going through a difficult marriage, when they're going through difficult children, our job is not to go and point and judge. Our job is to get alongside of them. Yeah, come on. Come on. 
Come on, come on, and have, allow the greater one that's on the inside of you to minister to them, to what? To bolster their faith, walk with them as they're walking through, and when they get to the other side, they'll look through you and look back like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we did it. Me, yeah. you, and Jesus, we, we did it. Amen. We walked through it. We came out the other side. Satan yeah. said, you were going to die back here? Look at us. We're alive and well. Alive and well. Satan said, you're going to go under. You're not going to make it. Look at us. Alive and well. Amen. Jesus did not promise you, come on, a safe ride or a journey that was not filled with peril or danger. As a matter of fact, I like to go back to the scripture often. When he said to the disciples in Mark's gospel, let's go to the other side. And they got into the boat. Do you know what happened? They had such smooth sailing that none of the gospel writers wrote about it. <laughs> no. The Bible says there was such a storm that professional uh, fishermen were quaking in their shoes going, we better wake him up because we're going to die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and some well-intended theologian, not even well-intended, some knucklehead under the influence of the evil one is talking about how Jesus is so disconcerned and so disconnected, unconcerned and disconnected, that he's sleeping in the back of the boat. <laughs> And they go wake them up. Listen to me. Jesus is not impressed by Satan. That's right. And yeah. neither should you be. Amen. 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 Are you listening to me? They go, hey, look what you care. We're going to die. And he's like, what are you talking about? Right? <laughs> die? I am. Yeah. Right? Right? Weren't you there? I just I am. <laughs> yep. Weren't you there? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Right? So what does he what does he show? He shows them how to how to stand up to Satan. How do I know this? Because the Bible says he rebuked the wind. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He rebuked it. Yep. Yeah, you rebuke demons. Yeah. You're not hearing me. Amen. Tornadoes, hurricanes, yep. they're not from God. Right. right. Right? He rebuked the wind. Right. Are you listening to me? And then he spoke to the waves. Now that was impressive. Yeah. Do you know why that was impressive? I mean, they missed that. Right, because you know he rebuked the wind, and the, the you know the, the 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 wind stopped blowing. But then he spoke to the waves. And can you imagine what that water did at that moment when they heard his voice? Oh, I recognize that voice. That's the voice that created me. Yeah. Oh, that's the deeper. Yeah. <laughs> what he said? That is the that I I recognize that voice. That's the right. voice that created me. Right. I better do what he says. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says immediately they were at the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Right. So, there's going to be difficulty, there's going to be challenge, there's going to be issues between here and there. What Jesus promises you, somebody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. listening. This is safe landing. Right. Yeah. You're going to get home. Yeah. You're going to be all right. And that is not some preacher, Pablo, that's scripture. Amen. Amen. So, when Satan comes along and says, you're not going to make it, it's not working out for you, it's getting worse. Look at all this wind, look at all these waves, look at how terrible it is. Tell him to shut up. Yeah, that's right. right. And then remember and remind yourself, I will land safely. Amen. Amen. I will get to the other side. Amen. I will overcome this. Why? Because yeah. I'm an overcomer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God forever. The curse is reversed. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. The Bible says, if you and your descendants turn to the Lord your God and obey him with your whole mind and, ju and being, just as I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will reverse your captivity. Amen. Somebody say, I'm about to come out. I'm about, about to come, come out. out. Right? He is turning things around for you, even as we're speaking to you this morning under unction of the Holy Spirit. God is working on your circumstance. He's working on your situation. Yeah. And he is turning it around. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Your adversary will always try to engage you in the battle of time because he is time bound. You're time bound, but you live with eternity on the inside of you. Amen. Are you listening to me? Say, what do you mean Satan's time bound? He's running out of time. <laughs> oh, let me, let, me, let me try you, right? When he really gets in your grill. How many of you ever had Satan really get in your grill? I'm the only one, Thank you. And I mean, you're not going to make it. You're going to go on. The symptoms start piling up. 
right? The, the financial situation doesn't get better, it gets worked on. It, I, it just, it looks, it, in the natural, you're looking like, all right, so there's the smoky black pit. Yeah. You need to remind your adversary. I'm one step closer to getting through this. Yeah. I am one day yeah. closer to being over this. Come on. Being yeah. done with this. Yeah. And you're yeah. one day closer to the pit. You're one day, what, listen, uh, listen, devil, I, I just one question. What are you going to do when that angel shows up with that chain? Come on. Uh, take him to the scripture in Revelation. Go ahead, I dare you, read it to him. Right? He knows it's there. He doesn't like when you read it to him because he doesn't like the word of God. <laughs> Amen? The word of God is what defeated. Okay, I am not, pre I'm not preaching. No, I'm not. You're just sitting there. I'm not. The word of God is what defeated him. Yeah. He sent his word to heal and to deliver them. Yeah. Does healing you and delivering you encompass everything about your life? Yeah. Then you've got enough power in Psalm 107, verse 20, to be healed and delivered of everything. Amen. There's enough power in that verse alone That's right. to send the devil, your adversary, running for the hills. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening to me? There's enough power in the Word of God to get everybody on the planet healed right now. Amen. Yes. <laughs> right now. Amen. Healed. Amen. And delivered, healed, and set free. I'm not waiting for it. I've got it. Now it's my current, present possession. By the way, devil, what are you going to do when that angel comes with that chain? Uh -huh. I, I'm sorry. I, I preached myself silly there for a minute because I'm healed and delivered from your nonsense right now. Let me just remind you again. What are you going to do when that angel shows up with the chain? Do you... Listen, if you're me, faith will make you sassy. Do you hear that? <laughs> I, I think he's getting it out of the closet. If I was you, <laughs> I would get to running. <laughs> I'm just saying, if the angel shows up right now, Satan, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to get away? There's nowhere you can go. You cannot escape what's coming to you. Yeah. That's right. I can escape your grip. Yeah. Amen. I can escape your plat, plot. Plat. The Bible says Amen. that I am free from the snare, the, the snare of the fire. I am set free from your trap. I am yeah. free. Somebody needs to get a hold of this this morning. I am free. I know sometimes symptoms will talk about I am free. No, no, I am free. I am free. I am, no, I am free. I am yes. free. The God of impossible has turned my situation around. He's turned yeah. this captivity, yeah. this yeah. plot, this scheme, this plan that Satan had for my life to destroy me. God has turned, turned it. Around. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He has set me free from it. I'm not chained to it anymore. By the way, Satan, what are you going to do? Yeah. Do you hear that? Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, I guess I'm the only one who's getting this. Glory to God. Glory to God. No matter how impossible your situation may look, God can turn it around. That's right. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter and the 26th verse, with men, this is impossible, right. but with God, with God all, all, things, all things, all things yeah. are possible. All things. Yeah. All you can get fired from the best job on the face of the planet, or at least in your mind, the best job on the face of the planet, and the very next day walk into the best job on the face of the planet. Amen. Mm. <laughs> I used to have that conversation with uh, a man that I worked with. He was from uh, he was from Jordan. He was a Muslim, and he just did not understand faith. <laughs> and he and I would have heated discussions about how certain things should be done. <laughs> And he was he was over me, right? So I was always respectful of him, and and I'll and I'll share with you how I know that, right? But we were having a particular discussion about a particular day over some certain numbers, and he said, "Well, what would you do if I fired you today?" I said, "I serve a God that I would walk and fall, butt backwards into money tomorrow." <laughs> and he went, "What?" <laughs> I said, "If you let me go today, I can assure you that tomorrow I will walk into what it is that God has for me." Yeah. yeah. Right. And after serving him, serving him, come on, he was over me. After serving him for a year and a half, when I left Oklahoma to come back to Connecticut, he brought me into the office and he kissed me on both shoulders. 
which in his culture is the ultimate sign of respect. Amen. Are you listening to me? Ha Hallelujah, your God. Turn it around for you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, we better move on. We were in 2 Kings. Yep. Do you remember that? We were in 2 Kings last week. Uh, there, there's, a, there's another example that is written for us in 2 Kings. We looked uh, last week at the widow woman. It's interesting how widow women seem to find themselves in very difficult circumstances and situations. Now, I want to pay attention to that. Right. Amen? Hallelujah. And uh, you remember last week that she had two sons and the creditors were going to come and they were going to take her sons and put her sons in prison until the debt was paid. I don't know how that works. <laughs> it would seem to me that you want the boys out of prison working to pay the debt off, but apparently you put them in prison. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And you know the story, right? Uh, she, uh, she goes and uh, she does exactly what the man of God says and uh, goes and gets a lot of pots from all the neighbors and they right. fill up all the pots of oil and then the, the word of the Lord to them is now go sell and live off the rest. Are you with me? Right. Yep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, without missing a beat, the Bible goes right into another account yeah. of another actual event that happened. That's and right. it's recorded for you and it's recorded for me. And so this is the story of the Shunammite woman, right? Who, um, well... How am I doing? Yeah, I need to preach. Right? Um, who was married, amen, uh, but didn't have any children. Uh, apparently, her husband was pretty successful at what he does, but every time Elisha came through, right, she was so taken with his ministry in the synagogue that she said to her husband one day, let's make a little room for him so that when he comes through, he can stay here. Now, I'd like to preach to you this morning about how what happens when you invite the anointing of God into your house. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's not get there just yet. <laughs> Amen. So her husband agrees, and so they put together this little room, and they let him know the next time he's in town, listen, whenever you're in town, don't worry about a thing. Come stay here. I love it. Uh, I, think, I think that every born-again Christian today should be, Jesus, you can come into the house anytime yeah. you'd like. We, we have a special room prepared for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say, oh, you thought I thought I was talking about the physical house? No, no, no. No, come into the house. Right. And, Come into the house. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come into the house. Yeah. Right? Those of you that are watching out there that don't know that Jesus is the Lord or haven't convinced him as the Lord of your life, ask him, come into my house. Be my Lord. Yeah. Be my God. Amen. You know, get wonderfully born again and allow Jesus to come and live yeah. in your house. Yeah. And so what we have here is what the Bible refers to, or what theologians refer to as types and shadows. What happens when you have the word of God, which is what the prophets in the Old Testament represented. Right? The right. Word, what happens when you have the Word of God take up residence in your house? Mm. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you what happens. One day the Word asks her, actually the Word is talking, I love this, the Word is talking with his assistant. Elijah is talking with his assistant about this woman. Jesus is talking with the Holy Spirit about it. <laughs> and, says, and says, what can we do for her? Did you ever picture Jesus having that conversation with the Holy Spirit of God and with His Heavenly Father about what it is they can do for you? Yeah. Mm. Are you listening to me, church? Because it got a little quiet here. Maybe you haven't thought along these lines. But God Himself is always trying to get into your life. Yeah. He's waiting for an invitation. What can I do for you? Mm. Why? I love you so much. What can I do for you? And uh, so he says to her, well, you know, listen, dear lady, would you like us to talk to the king for you? Whoo! Would you like us to go down to the White House and talk to Joe Biden for you? Hmm. Well, uh, how, about, how about we talk with the, you know, with the soldiers here? How we, how we, you know, she says, hey, listen, I'm living amongst my own people. I'm good. And the servant says, she doesn't have any children. Now, I, I, that was a little blind to me. But how many of you know when, when, you're, when you begin to dig into the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you? Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in this, I, I, I'm avoiding use the, the word story anymore. Nowhere in this actual event do we hear the woman articulate, I don't have a kid. You know what I'd really like? I'd really like a child of mine. 
You never see that in this account. Right. But the Holy Spirit did know her heart. Didn't you? Right. You're not hearing. Yeah. It. You're not hearing. How do I know this? Because the word says, Elijah says, oh, this is simple. This time next year, you're going to hold a son. Right. What, what is, what, what's happening here? The word is read her. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the word begins to speak out the desires of her heart. And you know what happened? She got pregnant by the word. Yeah, yeah. Does this sound familiar to you? Yeah. Does this sound like a 14-year-old virgin girl up there in right. Matthew's gospel? Yeah. Right? Come on. How, yeah. how could this be since I know no man? Right. Well, the word of God, come on. The spirit of God is going to overshadow yeah. you. And you're going to become pregnant. Listen, Mary became pregnant with the word, by the word. But there's a biblical setting precedent all the way back here in 2 Kings right. where a woman gets pregnant by the word. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And you know what happened in nine months? She gave birth to a miracle. Yeah. That same principle carries all the way through the New Testament. You can become so pregnant with the word of God that you begin to give birth to miracles. Yeah. You, you, little yeah. babies. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, well, I know the culture tries to teach you that a man can get pregnant. Let me assure you, he cannot. Yeah. <laughs> but spiritually speaking, you can become very pregnant. Right. Listen to me, man. You can become very pregnant. You can give birth to businesses. Right. Yeah. Come on. You can give birth to marriages. Come on. You can give birth to good children. You can, come on. All you need to do is apply the yeah. word of God. Yeah. You can build success because God has ordained you to build success. Listen to me, ladies. You can give birth to your own business. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You can give birth to your own ministry. Say it again. You can give birth to really, really good children. Yeah. Come on. You can give birth. But you need to get pregnant with the word. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? You need to go back to the Word of God. Come on, somebody. She invited the Word to come live at their house. Well, as this account goes on, not only does she give birth, but that boy grows up. How do I know this? Because the next thing we see, he is actually running out into the field to talk to his father. Right? Yeah, that's not a two-year-old. Come on. As a five or a six year old that recognizes daddy's out working in the field and he books out into the field. And the Bible says, my head, my head, and collapses on the ground. Mm -hmm. Isn't it just like the devil to try to kill your dream? Mm -hmm. Isn't it just like the devil to try to kill your miracle? Yeah. Isn't it just, I, we had a, a co worker that, that I worked with in my previous company who, for years, she had been married at the point that I had met her, probably married for about a decade, and her and her husband could not get pregnant. And it was one of those things that, that ate at her. And she would talk to me about it on occasion, and I turned to her one day. I said, I turned to her one day. One day. One day I turned to her, and I said, uh, do you really want to be a mother? And she said, yes, yes, I really, really want to be a mother. I said, then uh, you need to go home, and you need to prepare a nursery. Mm. And she looked at me like I had four heads, and she mm. didn't do it. And, da -da -da. and then some time went by, and she came back to me, and she talked to me, and I said, do you really want to be a mother? She said, yes. I said, you need to go home and prepare a nursery. But let me lay my hands on you because one of the anointings that my wife and I carry is people that have difficulty getting pregnant. We lay our hands on them and they get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. With what? The word. The word. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, we had another young lady that came here. Her, her, her mom comes here on a Friday night and she brought her daughter here and her and her husband have been trying for years to get pregnant and she just gave birth to number three. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you met her a little while ago, Miss Olivia, running up and down the aisle here, two years old. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, listen to me. She's like five now and insists on coming here on Friday nights. Yes. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. So anyways, uh, we laid our hands on her, and she went home. I said she went home, yes. and she got pregnant. Amen. How do I know this? Because she came in one day, and she showed me the picture. Oh, praise the Lord. Let me pray for you and pray for you. wisdom for you and your husband, da -da 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 -da, all that stuff, right? And a couple of weeks later, Satan killed her baby. Are you listening to me, church? What happens when Satan comes along and tries to kill your dream? Right? You've actually given birth to the miracle. It actually started to walk, started to talk. I mean, it's real. It's in your life. This little fellow is still in the womb, yeah. right? But she had never gotten this pregnant before. Why did God do this to me? Why would God give me a baby and then take it away? And I was able to teach her. God didn't do this.
that Satan is trying to kill your dream. Do you really want to be a mother? And she's got tears running. I can see her right now. Tears running down her face. She's like, yes, I want to be a mother. I said, go home and prepare a nursery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Third time. Right? And by the way, don't pick neutral colors. Because I asked her. I, mean, I left that part out. I asked her, Dude, would you like a boy? Or we want a boy. Go home and prepare a nursery for a boy. Is, but is that pretty clear instruction? Yes. But if you've never been pregnant before, come on, church. Yes. That sounds like lunacy. Right. Well, a, a little bit more time goes by, and we have some restructuring, and we have to let her go. Because I had talked to her about, listen, you know, are you going to stay home with your child? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to quit my job. You know, I'm going to quit working. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to raise the boy. You know, faith can work in that. Yeah. You know what she said? I'm going to stay home and raise the boy. Come on. Yeah, yeah. There, a little bit of faith. That's all, that's all it took. It's all the Holy Spirit needed. Yeah. How do I know this? Because she's now the mother of like a 12-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Praise God. Let, listen, Satan is going to come along. He's going to try to kill your dream. He's going to try to snuff it out. Yeah. I really do enjoy what this woman did. Are right, you ready? She gives birth to a son, just as Elijah told her. Verse 18, 2 Kings 4 and 18. The child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was uh, out with the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. Hallelujah. I love the dad. Yeah, listen, get that boy out of here. <laughs> Bring him back to his mother. Yeah. Amen. And then she took it, come on. She took the child and put the child on her lap. Come on, pouring in care, pouring in love. Have you ever poured your whole soul into something? Yeah, come on. Right? Your whole, I mean, she's got her whole life here. And she is pouring all the love she knows how to pour into it. And Satan snuffed it out. And what I find remarkable is that she actually blames God. No, I don't find it remarkable. I find a lot of people on the planet blame God for stuff he didn't do. God yeah. is not the author right. of death. Satan is. That's right, right? You say that again. God is not the author of death. Amen. Satan is. Amen. If it's stealing from you, if it's destroying your life, if it's trying to kill you, that is not God. Amen. Amen. It's your adversary. So she pours all the love and all the care and all the compassion that she can pour into this child, and it dies anyways. There's a certain level of emotionalism here, isn't there? Yeah. Right? His presence has filled this room. I can tell because I can see the glory of God resting on you. <laughs> right? His presence has filled this place. And you're beginning to experience because each one of you can identify. Certainly, I can identify with this woman. Yeah. Huh? He gave birth to something, and Satan comes along and destroys it, and your first response is, why, God, why? Why is this happening to me? So the servant lifted him up, carried him to his mother, the boy sat in her lap until noon, and then he died. So she went up, and she laid on the bed of the man of God, and she shut the door, and she went out. There's something about the anointing yeah. that yeah. is transferable. Yeah. She knew that the word slept in that bed. Yeah. She knew that the word, come on. And so what did she do? She put that child into the hands of the word. Yeah. 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 Oh, we will get that in just a minute. Yeah. That'll sink in. It'll be so good. And she called her husband and she said, send me one of the servants and a donkey. I need to go to the man of God quickly. And I'll return. And he was like, why go to him today? It's not a new moon. It's not a Sabbath. There's no right. special feast going on. What are you going to see him for? And what did she say? Because the baby's dead and I need to go talk to him? I don't know. What did she say? It's all right. Yep. Yeah, it's all good. It's all right. Amen. She's well, staring death into the top. Now listen, yeah. her dream has died in her lap. Yep. Yeah. So she took her. Come on. you got to get a hold of this woman. you got to get a hold of what she did. She took it and put it in the hands of the one who could turn it around. She said, listen, it's all right. 
Amen. It's all right. I'm going to put this right into the anointing. I'm going to put it into the anointed one's hand. I'm going to put it into the word of God's hands as it's all right. Yep. It's Amen. all right. Some of you need to get that phrase out. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, don't you know the economy's gone to hell in a handbasket? It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Don't you know that this has happened, that's happened, no, Russia's doing this, China's doing that. He does. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Listen, the, the, the Bible here isn't talking about denying a circumstance. The Bible here is talking about denying its right to exist in your life. When the word of God says that you will have a child, well then bless God you'll have a child. You're going to give birth to a dream. And the only question that you have to ask and answer is, will you put it back into the hands of God? Right, yeah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Will you put it back into the hands yeah. of God? Yeah. Because that's what she did. Yeah. Amen. Right. And the Bible goes on and records this, that she gets on a donkey. Uh, she says to the guy that she's going with, you ride ahead. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. Right? Amen. And when he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, so Elijah sees her coming, says to his servant Gehazi, look, there's a Shunammite. Run and meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Yeah. Everything is all right, she says. Faith calls those things. Right? Amen. Yeah. Yep. It's all right. It's fine. It's all right. Yeah. Right? Because, listen, Elijah has this problem. And uh, maybe it's not a problem. He sees her coming. I find it amazing. He recognizes her. Yep. Right? Sees her coming, but God hasn't revealed to him what the issue is. You know, sometimes the father will withhold things from the son. And the son doesn't know. Nobody knows in the day or the hour. <laughs> right? Has it revealed it to me? You go and ask her. And what does she say? Everything's all right. Yeah. You call those things that are not as though they were already. Amen. Right? She could have broke down in tears to gaze. I said, it's terrible. The baby's dead. No, it's all right. It's all right. So she reaches the man of God at the mountain, and she takes a hold of his feet. Now, to you and I, that's a little blind. And I'm not going to preach about how she got a hold of his feet. But in the Jewish culture, nobody touches the prophet of God. I, let me say that again. Nobody touches the prophet of God. Let me try that again. Nobody touches the prophet of God. But there is, in this case, a biblical precedent-setting event. Do you remember that there is an account up there in the Gospels where a woman pours perfume yes. on the feet yes. of Jesus? Yes. What's she doing? She just begins to work. Come on. She's yeah. just, just worship. But, but yeah. God hasn't revealed to the man of God that this is what's happened. Right. And, and, of course, Gehazi is like, get off of him. <laughs> right? And the man of God, Elijah, says, leave her alone. She's in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. And then she says, she finally gets the words out. Did I ask you for a son? Didn't I tell you don't raise my hopes? Come on. Aren't we her? Yeah. Aren't we hurt? Why did you do this? Why, why did you heal me only to have the symptoms right. come back? Come on. Right. Why did you? Come on. Listen. I, come on. Come on. Why are you teasing me? Right. Why did God kill my baby? That kept coming back to me as I was preparing. Right? I, I have a, a cousin who, who uh, had difficulty getting pregnant, and she uh, almost gave birth. I mean, almost. I, the, the devil killed her baby in, child, in, in labor. Listen, church, he didn't. Right? He didn't. Amen. He didn't. And Elijah says to his servant, tuck your coat into your belt. Take your take my staff. Somebody say the word. The word. The word. In your hand and run. The moment you pray, he hears and he answers. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Take my staff. Take my word. In your hand, run. Don't talk to anybody. 
Come on. Anybody you meet, if anyone greets you, don't even answer them. And then lay your staff on the boy's face. Right? Put the word into your child that's gone astray. Amen. Come on. Put the word into the circumstance that's not acting properly. Put the word. Amen. Listen, you got to put the word to work. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Didn't leave myself a bit of time to preach. Can you take a little more? Yeah. Good. So the child's... Uh, child's mother says to him, As surely as the Lord lives, I will not leave you. So he got up and he followed her. And Ge Gehazi went, away, went ahead and did exactly what the man of God said, right? Mm -hmm. Gets there, doesn't greet anybody, puts the staff on the child's body, and the boy didn't wake up. Were you ever standing on the word of God mm. and it didn't seem like anything was happening? Yeah, come on. Uh, it didn't seem like it was working. I'm doing exactly what Pastor said to do on Sunday. I started speaking the word. Nothing changed. Uh, I guess this doesn't work. Satan is counting on that. Yeah, yeah. He's counting on you to fold up your tents immediately. Right. Hallelujah. But I'm using the word. I'm speaking the word. Still didn't come back to life. And then Elijah reaches the house. What happens when the anointing shows up? Uh -huh. And the boy's lying dead on the couch, and he went in, and he shut the door, and the two of them prayed to the Lord. Many miracles are a result of time being spent alone with God in yeah. prayer. Yeah, amen. There's a reason why we see this instruction over and over again. We see it in the Old Testament here. We see it in the New Testament where Jesus goes and raises Tabitha from the dead, puts out all doubt and unbelief, shuts the door. Shuts the door, yep. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Speak the word. Absolutely speak the word. Absolutely speak the word to your circumstance. But do not neglect time alone with God. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Time amen. alone with him. Meditating on how good he is. Yeah. How gracious he is. How kind he is. How big he is. We, have, we do a really, really good job here in the earth of magnifying the problem. We do a poor job of magnifying God. We make the problem so big that it seems insurmountable and God is up in heaven going Pfft. it's not big not to me it isn't it is not impossible mm -hmm. not to me it isn't it's not you need to start reminding yourself of how big your God is amen Amen. amen? Right. hallelujah well let's finish up then the word got into bed and laid on the boy mouth to mouth eyes to eyes hands to hands I'd imagine this would be illegal today. <laughs> Stretch himself out on the boy, and his body grew warm. And what, str what struck me, I, I, listen, I gotta develop this. Somebody say five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, so give me five. Anybody? Mm. Five, 10, 15, okay, I got 15, that's all I need. Mouth to mouth. The word of God is mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah. Yeah. From his mouth to your mouth will breathe life right. into dead things. Yeah. Eye to eye. Seeing things as he sees things right. yeah. will change your vision. Yeah. Right. You're get hold of this. And will bring your dream back to life. Yeah. Right. Bring, uh, listen to me. It'll bring your dream. It'll bring the vision God has given you. Right? The hope and the future. Right? When the, when the enemy comes along and says, no, I'm going to cut your future short. I'm, listen, we're going to snuff you out. You're going to lose everything. You must remind him. Mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah. Eye to eye yeah. resuscitation. Listen, yeah. I see as God sees. This is not the end of me. We put it on the wall back there. Jeremiah 29 11. I know the plans I have for you, oh, says man. the Lord. That's what God says. He says, I know the plans I have for you. It wasn't plans to snuff you out early. It was plans to give you a hope and a future. A plan to prosper you, not to harm you. A plan to give you a certain end. And you have an adversary that comes along and tries to thwart that plan. Right. And it is your job. Nobody can do this for you, church. This is where I get to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. No one can do this for you. What we can do is we can come along by, by your side. Yeah. We can walk with you. We can strengthen you. We can encourage you. We can say, listen, you know, I, I, get, I get calls, I get texts, I tell people, listen, don't rehearse your, your symptoms to me. Don't rehearse your problem to me. Don't fill up my, I got a text from someone yesterday. They filled my text. It's this long. 
after giving them instruction, don't fill it up. Just type, I'm in it. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. The fight has been engaged. Right. The adversary is standing in my face. And I just need someone to come stand with me. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. There's anybody in this room, listen, anybody in this room, that if you got a text from one of your, come on. Yeah. Well, listen, let's go whine about it for a while. No, 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 I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I'm speaking the word of God in agreement with you. I am believing God with you right now. That he is strengthening you by his spirit in your inner man. That he is filling you with an excessive dose of his power. Yes. And that you will know. Mm. Woo! Right. You will know. Listen, you want to pray for somebody? Well, I pray the Lord blesses you. We went over this in that series we just did. Uh -huh. Show me in the Bible where it says pray for, for God to bless people. He's already blessed them. I'm sorry. Where, where it says, for you, when you're part of the church, this is how you pray for the church. Lord, bless people. He's already blessed. Yeah, he is already with blessed. every spiritual blessing. Yeah, right? But Pete sends a text. I'm in it. Lord, strengthen people. Yeah. By your spirit in this inner man. Yeah. Fill him to overflowing with the knowledge of your will for his life. It's a long life. It's a satisfying life. Yeah. Strengthen his fingers to bend a bow of bronze. To train his arms to make war. Right. Why? Because he's in it. Yeah. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder. Right. Until what? Until you come out to the other side. Right. You're going to go through stuff. Right. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm going through. Oh, it doesn't mean you have to stop. Right. Hey, Amen. I heard a preacher say one time, if you're going through hell, don't stop. No. Keep on moving. Why, why would you want to camp out there? Right. Hell is terrible. There's no hope there. There's no help there. Right. Yeah. Keep moving. Right. right. Yeah. Get a faith, buddy. Amen. <sighs> so I, any, I, get a faith. I'm not, not just anybody. Get a faith, buddy. Somebody that you know Amen. will stand with you in the fight. Yeah. Amen. Anybody in this room yeah. would take up anybody else's part. That's the whole point yeah. of the church, yeah. the ecclesia. Right. Right. It's not so you can come here and feel good. Come on. Yep. Right. And so that, you know, listen, Monday's coming. Right. Yep. I've already spoken to Cindy about the war that I'm in at work. <clears throat> right? right? I don't need to keep whining about it. Right. Baby, I'm in it. Okay. Yeah. Got your back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you with me? Oh, <laughs> are you with me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the whole point of this, the whole point of what we're showing you by the Holy Spirit is don't go through alone. Right. There's a reason why we live in community, common union. Yes. You've got trouble I got trouble. Here's what I know about storms, Christian. I've learned three things about storms. You're either in one right now, you've just come out of one, or you're about to go in one. Those are the three truths of a storm. The only question is, are you going to do it alone? Are you going to look out for each other? Right? Are you going to get a hold? Are you going to do what this woman did? Right? She's living in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. She knew enough to put her situation into the Word of God. Right, yeah. To put it into, make sure you bring the anointed one and his anointing. You cannot separate Jesus, the anointed one, from his anointing. Make right. sure you bring the Word into your circumstance. Right. Bring his anointing into your circumstance. Use mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Use eye-to-eye. -eye. Change your vision. Right? And then get a faith buddy. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Somebody that will stand in the fight with you. Somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning, you get the text, you're not calling them up going, okay, tell me everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the next thing you know, it's three hours later, you know everything that's been said. Well, no, you know everything that's been said as they received it. Right, yeah. And they are no closer to resolution, right. change. Come on. Right. That's why I say to people, don't rehearse your symptoms to me. Right. Just say, Pastor, I'm in it. And I know enough about their circumstance to say, okay, Lord, 
They're in the fire. And the Bible says, wonderful Jesus, you said, where two yeah. or Amen. three agree according to your will, Amen. it'll be done. Amen. Stand your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your holy written word. Lord, it is life to us. It is medicine to all of our flesh. And now I speak over these, your people, mouth to mouth resuscitation. Amen. Resuscitation from the word of God and then the word of God changing circumstance, changing situation, changing. You are the God who reverses the curse.